Welcome to Too Many Jams. It's a show about all things 20-year-old. With help from friends, experts, and our own personal experiences. That was bad. With help from friends, experts, yeah. and our own personal experiences, we hope to shed some light on those things that leave our age group lost and confused. Uh, we, have a, we have a special guest today. Uh, her name is Tatum Osborne, and she comes all the way from North Carolina. She came all the way in just all to do this in. podcast. Just to do this podcast. <laughs> we flew her in. We used all our big sponsorship money. We actually helicoptered in because it was more expensive. I just yeah. wanted to blow that dough. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so let's talk about our sponsors who funded her helicoptering. First off, we got True History. True History Brewing is a Toronto craft brewery started by a couple of our friends. And um, we're actually filming this in the morning right now. So we don't have any beer going. I don't want a beer either. We've been drinking all weekend. Yeah, it's, it, was, it was kind of a heavy weekend. But, uh, but anyways, check them out. They got... Uh, they got some great beers in LCBOs all throughout the city. Um, true history. True history. Drink them. They're great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, quick shout out to Wrist and Rye, Jams 15 for 15% off jewelry. And shout out to Bottle Rocket Studios. Uh, just follow her social, give her a DM, let her know you come from the pod, and uh, she'll treat you right. And last, uh, lastly, shine the light on. Uh, is that a sponsor now? <laughs> I don't know Eli wanted a shout oh, out this past shout weekend. Out. <laughs> Unofficially, <laughs> yeah. let's just shout Eli out for having a great business. But yeah, the, the guy gets on TV. I don't think he needs. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he needs us. <clears throat> I don't think he needs our sponsorship. Anyway, let's get into let's it. Let's get into the episode. Yeah, we have. Uh, we didn't really explain the the reason why Tatum's here, but Tatum is is from North Carolina. That wasn't a lie, and she did fly in just for the weekend. That wasn't a lie. But uh, the circumstances were not helicoptered in or anything. She, uh, I met you in Florida in January. We were both on vacation. We were in luxurious Fort Lauderdale <laughs> at the grittiest establishment on the Strip, Elbow Room. And uh, <clears throat> describe to me uh, uh, that night from your memories. Okay. Um, so me and my friend, it was our first night in Florida. Why were you there? Um, so my friend's boss has a yacht, so she invited us and it's basically a free trip if we pay for a flight. So I was like, got to get down there. Cool. Give, give her a little bit more heat. Just um, bit. Trav, why were you there? Um, I own a yacht and I have a lot of money. <laughs> so that's where you go. No, I was just there for a boys weekend. We were there to watch, uh, Every every year we watch the Toronto Maple Leafs play in, in a different place. Yeah. So we picked uh, Fort Lauderdale to watch them play the Panthers. And then we also mix in like a heavy weekend of partying around it. Yeah. Yeah. Tight. Of course. Um, but yeah, was at the bar that night and saw you walk in, saw that neon shirt of yours that he was wearing. I was wearing the uh, <laughs> Tiger Beer. Oh, oh shirt. yeah. Were like, you? Okay. Yeah. I look like a bum. <laughs> <laughs> he did at first. I was like, mm, I don't know. But I saw you dance, kind of and then bums. I immediately knew it. I was like, I need to go talk to that guy. <laughs> and now we're here. So wait, who approached who? Was it? You know what? So I was given signals. She was given sure. signals. I was like given the eyes. Elbow Room is a gritty <laughs> establishment. Yeah. And when I just saw like a pretty girl in it, period, it stands out. Like also you're tall and like mm-hmm. it was just like we locked eyes. Um, but no, the uh, the way I remember it was. Uh, yeah, we walked in there, and then Sean just hit me. He goes, yo, dude, that girl just looked at you, <laughs> did some whisper to her friend, and like th- th- it's definitely because of you. And I'm like, no. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I started paying attention to you, picked up on a few signals. But this goes to my point. Remember yeah. how I say like in Toronto, mm-hmm. I don't feel, I don't ever feel like that happens. Yeah. And then I travel. This is the first night on my vacation. And someone just like, yeah. And then what happens is like, then I feel confident enough to go up and say hi. Okay. Okay. That is my theory. I tell all my friends this. Um, in the States, guys don't come up to you uh, often. They don't just come up to you because they think that what the perspective I've gotten from them is like, they don't want to go up and seem creepy. Yeah. yeah. So I make it a point if I'm interested in somebody, which is like very rare. Um, 
I don't know, I just saw him and I knew I needed to go talk to him. If that's something like I need to give the first signal to show I'm interested and then I leave it. And if they're interested, then they can feel comfortable making the move. Yeah. That is my theory. And I share it with all my friends. I'm like, you have to show some sort of interest before someone can come up to you without them seeming yeah i don't know creepy i'd agree with that yeah, yeah i think it's a no-brainer we try to preach that to the girls out there that are like um in toronto especially are very like closed standoffish off. yeah, it, just like it, it's also the guy's fault it's it's just a weird culture we have here in toronto i don't know about anywhere else where guys are really like creepy <laughs> yeah and as a result girls are really closed off but then non-creepy guys also girls miss out on those guys because mm -hmm. They go to the it's bar with a force field up yeah. with their girl squad. Guy comes up. They like oh, Star Wars, like, like force them away. Like you walk up, they just slice you up. Ew. You think you can talk to us? Get away, freak. Like not quite like that, but you know, mm -hmm. slicing us up. So then the guys get scared. And now any non-creepy guy will have a hard time approaching girls because then they get lumped in with the creepy guys. Totally. And it's this whole fucking mess. And I feel like the blame gets put on the male in a way sometimes. Um, so say I left elbow room mm -hmm. and I was thinking about him the whole night. And I was like, dang, I, sh I regret not giving him a signal. So he could, I don't know. Yeah. Not showing my interest. So I don't know. I'm in the mindset of just saying, fuck it. Like if I'm feeling that I'm going to go act on it. Not in an impulsive way, but in the, in a like responsible yeah. way. There's also sometimes, I don't know, maybe the guy didn't pick up on or maybe he's so not like confident with approaches that like I honestly if someone didn't point it out to me I may have missed it because I I wasn't a bit of a consumption vortex <laughs> right so <laughs> Sean was the one who noticed it not even me mm -hmm. so you know you never know and you would have had to come up and say what what up but that being said anyway we can talk a lot about because you have you have some cool um things that I think I would love if we sprinkle People. that on Toronto <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. For guys and girls, but the okay, case. So, so we met. Yeah, we met in Florida, and yeah, nothing wrong with you. There's no harm in just looking interested in a guy. It's not like that's embarrassing for a girl to be like, "Hey, making some eye contact, smiling." It's not like why is that? It's so hard for the guy to approach a girl that's given him zero signals. It's not embarrassing at all to smile at a guy that doesn't approach you later. It's not like that's a big rejection. But anyway, yeah, we we uh, we chatted, and we ended up being like extremely, like I don't know, compatible. Yeah, just like you might you might tell from the podcast that she like slots right into our whole our philosophies on like twenty year old stuff and uh, dating, sex, work. She's like honestly does exactly what we do in Wilmington, where she's from. Yeah, like born somewhere else completely different but like has a similar lifestyle similar kind of like gig of a career where she does a bunch of different things to make a lifestyle mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. um but we can get into all this instead of me narrating okay for you but you're 22 22 yeah 23 in may and i didn't know that <laughs> uh we didn't know that what until day we landed. may when in may May 26th on may 6th cool 20 days we i thought she was my age and she thought i was closer to her age uh, but if you like, I would, I would say that, you know, I wouldn't say that you're younger. If, yeah. Like, like if I were to look. Yeah. Well, so anyway, we had, we, we met in Fort Lauderdale. Um, she parted with us the rest of the night. We had a, we had like a, an Air, Air, Airbnb, Airbnb with like a pool, all that shit. So we were like, we had a good night and then, um, we just stayed in touch a little bit mm -hmm. and it you were like, oh, I've never been to Canada. Yeah. Yeah. I've never been. Is your Canada. first time in Canada? Yeah, first time no in Canada. Shit. I like it. I'm glad you guys don't live in igloos for <laughs> sure. <laughs> what was what was the biggest myth coming here that you had heard? I really did. That, I don't know a lot about um, Canada at all. The, the myth only was that no one talks about just it. that it's cold. It's and cold. It snows. Yeah, it's yeah. Cold, and yeah. I was excited for that because I have not put on a hat, like a toboggan or anything like that this toboggan. year. A real um, <laughs> toque. Toque. <laughs> As you guys call it. <laughs> a toboggan. Beanie. Beanie is another word. I'm not put on a toboggan. Do you know what do you call toboggans? Do you know what a toboggan Maybe is? Maybe it's a southern thing. Toboggan is uh we call like sl sleds. Like you know when you go down a hill oh my God, yeah, on a sled? We call that a toboggan. I've definitely called it a hat for sure. You've called 
that a hat. Hats a toboggan before? Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> Whack. <laughs> My southern ass. Okay. Speaking of that, Trav <laughs> in his trunk has like three toboggans that are just like <laughs> taking up space that never get never used. Never fucking know. For like, for like no reason at all. True. I have, don't know why they're in there. Because you never know when you see that perfect hill. <laughs> And you just need to send it. Hasn't debogged in years. Years. I, th- those have been in there since I got that car like four or five years ago. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so you were pumped about the cold. Yeah. Excited about the cold. You, you Brought my real for, jackets out. Yeah. You, you were looking for an excuse to break out uh, your winter gear. Yeah. Um, it, and just get out of Wilmington or just anywhere. Anywhere where you're getting out of your regular routine. Just is such a relief to me. I think it's so important. I think I want to do that for the rest of my life once a month. <laughs> I don't care if it's two hours away. I don't care if it's 45 minutes away. I don't care if it's like across the world. I just think getting out of your natural routine is so important for mental health and just for you to, I don't know, take time and reflect every once in a while. Because if you're constantly in this routine, you're not having the time to reflect. And I don't know. I, I'm always so relaxed when I'm on any type of vacation. And what is, what is your normal routine? Like, what do you do in Wilmington? Okay, so I've been a personal assistant for the last five years for this doctor. I do a personal life, so taxes, property management, basically anything that she needs. Yeah. So I make my own hours, which is great. So say I have a really busy day, I'm going to say, hey, can't meet today, like meet tomorrow. Um, yeah. It's awesome. I get to schedule when I want to work out. Um, I work out at a place called Amplify. It's cycling, yoga, uh, and high intensity interval training. So I do that couple times a week and then i also throw pottery uh throwing meaning make pottery that's just the the verb that we use yeah yeah Yeah, you're not like chucking pottery against the wall throwing it (laughs) yeah (laughs) so i've been trying to get in the studio almost every day at least for an hour even if it's just like cleaning up work so yeah that's my normal sorry studio the pottery studio pottery studio yes cool yes Uh, and then and when it's warm i try and surf as much as possible yeah. And don't you like sprinkle in, like you were explaining to me, like you just sprinkle in money where you can, like surf lessons oh, yeah, yeah. or like. Yeah. Uh, oh, you self. teach surf. Yeah. As well. So I also teach surf lessons in the summer. It starts about May and ends in September. So it's fun just getting in the water and it's all girls. So it's a mermaid surf school. So it's it's nice, empowering little girls just because nice. they get intimidated when they have a male instructor and they can just feel comfortable seeing girls surf and getting on their boards. It's It's honestly the cutest thing. I've ever seen like it makes me cry sometimes it's so sweet <laughs> uh, and you um, said you just like you you like mix in like you might sell like some pottery if somebody wants it yeah, or like yeah. just sell pottery like that. Yeah, like, um i do anything i need to do to get by um anything i also it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> i uh also um yeah i also dog sit like nanny babysit anyone it's just a small town so once you do something you can pick it up yeah so you're like you're, you're kind of like the same as us yeah. like just kind of grabbing at anything that'll uh make a little dough to keep the lifestyle alive which yeah. man, sure. it's so hard to leave like, as i said we work out when we want to work out we eat when we want to eat we have time to like really take care of ourselves and then we can work anytime we want all night so it just all works out mm-hmm. somehow i don't know um but there, much happier that way at least for me, I, because I have some health stuff with the concussions, if I don't have the time to be in control of my schedule, I start to get real unhealthy feeling with my like neck and my head. Um, that's why I've kind of avoided traditional jobs because I find personally when I work my traditional job, so much of the day is gone and the structure of that really kind of like, I get home and I just crash. You know, I don't know. Just I get so tired when I sit at an office that I I just when I get home I crash and then it's eight p.m. and I'm not gonna go to the gym and like I'm not gonna like do all my shit. So I mm-hmm. just try to keep this going. But another fun fact about Tatum that I love just throwing out there: she's she's a licensed skydiver and has skydived seventy nine times, eighty nine times. <laughs> it's fucking wild. That's crazy. I know. Like we it's speak crazy. about this, about how like we want to get up there enough that we can go, uh, you know, like on our own. Because mm-hmm. like, like what is the, and stuff. how many do you need to jump? How many jumps do you need to do before you can go when you're not attached to someone? So where I'm from, you only need one. 
You need one really? tandem jump. America, dude. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> they and they're falling with a gun. You just shoot all the other skydivers out of the air. <laughs> Do you get like, uh, is there like a plaque you get for like a hundred jumps or something? Yes. So each, there are four different, <laughs> of course there, <laughs> there are four different licenses. There's A, B, C, and D. So your A license is the first certification you get. So you'd be able to jump anywhere in, in the United States. You just show them your license and they'll send you right up. Uh, so the first jump you do a tandem and then after that it's called ground school. Mm -hmm. It's like eight to 10 hours of just loading information in and you're sitting there like, trying to absorb it all mm -hmm. and you leave feeling so insane because you're like oh yeah yeah like i'm about to do my first jump by myself yeah um if you fuck up there's nobody attached to you yeah after one jump yeah, yeah yeah but the good thing is is you have coaches and instructors that help you get stable once you get out the door on your first mm -hmm. lone jump but after that you have a radio on your chest mm -hmm. and it's all up to you um so yeah after that you have 25 Wild. jumps you get your a license and then you get your b license for 50 jumps and that uh you're able to do night jumps so every once in a while who's doing night jumps they're so fun come on oh it's crazy it's full moon um we light up the whole drop zone it's it's How? really insane oh uh, just our cars oh cool yeah we line up all our cars oh where you're landing where we're landing so yeah, you can yeah. see because the shadow just it, you see your shadow and you think you're about to land and then you're not about to land and you don't want to once you start your landing process you can't pull out of it because when you are breaking you are deflating your parachute so if you reinflate it you're gonna drop you drop yeah and i've done that before and i have a scar on my butt because i ripped through my leggings yeah i slid on the tarmac like this and it cut here <laughs> yeah. right in my pants i had a hole right in my vagina and then um <laughs> on my butt and yeah so it's just i don't know you keep going and you can get your c license and your d license and then once you get your d license what does c and d jumps. let you do so B is jumping out of a hot air balloon and night jumps. Okay. And yeah. then C is you get to wear a camera, GoPro, whatever. Why is that yeah. a license? Yeah, why? Well, because it's really annoying. Is it like some distracting don't care. or something? Yeah, it's distracting. They don't want it to be distracting. And especially with all the social media and stuff, everyone's like, I've got to get the selfie. picture. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. do it unless I got a picture, you know? It's mm -hmm. true, though. If you did something and no one saw it, did you really do it? Did That's you really do my it? opinion for, yeah. for reals. <laughs> yeah. For Wait, sure. and then D license is? 500 jumps. And that's when you can start your tandem training so you can be the person who's taking oh, somebody else. So you're like... 400 short of, uh, yeah. of that D license. Oh, also C licenses, um, wingsuiting and base jumping. Oh fuck. Yeah. 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 Oh, to, and that's the goal. That's the goal was, is to get to wingsuiting eventually. So have you done that yet? No, no, no. You have no. to get to 200 jumps. Oh, I'm at 89. Wait, sorry. Okay. C license is 200, 200 jumps? jumps. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is radical. <laughs> what yeah. a, what a unique thing. And I didn't, okay. We, I didn't know any of this until I creeped your Instagram um before you were, you were coming to canada which is crazy because that's not an over exaggeration of how little we knew each other you're just a kind of a bold enough person that you just suggested i've never been to canada like give me an excuse i'll come up there yeah and i was like okay uh and i thought it was going to be the game because there was um we are back home our team is carolina hurricanes hockey yeah, and yeah so they we, were playing everyone in Toronto. listening is uh Hockey fan? Yeah, they're Canadians. So they know all the teams. Yeah, I know, but everywhere where I'm from, nobody yeah. watches hockey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you watch hockey then? Yeah, yeah. 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 She said when she's I, been to like what thirty, forty, fifty hurricane yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Wow. Well, it's so cheap. It, it's yeah. not like Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, yeah, way yeah, different no, here. Yeah, yeah. Like your flight home will be ha a, one ticket to a, yeah. a Leafs game. Yeah, I mean the or solid your round seat. trip flight. Sorry, your round trip flight <laughs> is one ticket to the Leafs game. Uh, single. Single. Nice seat, decent seat. No, nope. no, the worst in that building. What? Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, actually, that okay, would sorry. give me a solid seat. Okay, three hundred dollars. One hundred. Sorry, no, one hundred and eighty US is the bad seats um, in the thing. So, sorry, it would be two tickets. Mm -hmm. you, you could go, but uh, anything up, it goes up quickly, quick, like two, three, four hundred US, just like a few rows up. Mm -hmm. You drop into the lower bowl, it's like five, six hundred, maybe US. Uh, per ticket. That's absurd. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't pay that. And, that, that's, and that's for like the sh to play the shittiest team. That's just to be there. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. but uh, so yeah, you were like, you you messed me. You're like, how about this? I'll come down. I'll watch the Hurricanes play the Leafs. Up. Come up. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know where the Earth is. The Earth could be upside down right now. You're right. You're space. right. 
um, I'll come and I'll see the hurricane. The Hurricanes play the Leafs. She goes, I'll get the flights. You get the tickets. And I was like, knowing deep down that the the tickets were like, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, all right. But no, I, I, I was joking. I, I could have like reached out to a buddy with seasons and paid face value, which is affordable. I was just kidding. Um, but we had a show that night. It was yes, February twenty second. Yes. We were playing a concert. So we just uh, kept chatting, and this uh, weekend at my cottage popped up, and I'm just messaged. I was like, it might be weird, but if you want to come to a cottage, a house in the countryside, uh, with a, you know, thirteen people you don't know, uh, come on down. And you're like, yep. You s- you sent the flight the next morning. You're like, booked it. I was yeah. I was sitting there. Honestly, I was so hungover, <laughs> sitting on the couch watching the Taylor Swift documentary. And I was like, I asked my friend, I was like, should I do it? She said, yep. I said, okay. And I booked Love my it. flight. And I did not think about it until the Tuesday before I left and I arrived on Thursday. And I was like, oh, I'm going to Canada. I need to uh, figure out what to wear and um, what yep, they eat that's it. And what, what their yeah, customs are. Yeah. The thing is, it's not like we were talking this whole time. No, either. no, no. We talked, we talked one time. We texted, to make like, sure that I didn't regret it. Well, I, te- I messaged once being like, uh, and I sent her the no regrets like meme from, you know, that, that guy who got a tattooed yeah, on his yeah. neck from that movie. For sure. Um, because I just, I was so confused by it. I was like, I would do what she's doing. I would go somewhere because it, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm a guy. It's maybe not, not as crazy. Um, <laughs> of a move, but like when you were open for it, that's why I was like, okay, I remembered you being cool and chill and you hung out with the boys at the Airbnb and hit it off. So I knew it was going to be okay, but I was like still a little bit like, do you want phone numbers, like addresses? Like, why aren't there like, you're not asking any questions. Um, (laughs) And like what you're doing is basically coming to Canada, living, staying with me uh, for a day, then going to a house in the countryside with a bunch of strangers with no, like no addresses, no number, no phone numbers, no nothing like that. And I was like, that's, fucking wild but you're like no i just got good feelings got good feelings about it it's gonna be good (laughs) yeah a couple a couple canadian boys they're all nice right well i knew we were fine she's like you're not gonna kill me right i'm like i know i'm not gonna kill you cool how do you know that you know what i mean your friends and family texting you since you uh since you've been here they have a track not really my mom was just like i know you're having fun love you and then yeah i talked to my friend every day so we were just facetiming it couldn't be more dangerous than base jumping or, or like skydiving, right? If you think yeah. about the statistics yeah, that's true. of us being like a group of murderers, it's probably similar to the statistics of, you know. It's actually really safe. It's crazy. People, like the older generations that, you know, live, literally lived or died for it, mm-hmm. um, get really upset at us when they come see us just jumping like it's a Disneyland ride. One time this older lady came up and sat us all down. We were new jumpers and she was like, like shut up old lady <laughs> she was giving us some shit she was like you guys are spoiled brats i was like oh my god wait what do you mean though because it's so safe there's so many ways as long as you're smart i mean mm-hmm. you're gonna survive um so so wait what was her bone to pick with you guys though just that we were like having seemed, fun yes it was so careless <laughs> and uh, for her and for her generation it was yeah it was horrible oh, you was didn't know if you were dangerous. gonna yeah oh my gosh yeah she showed us a picture and she was like all these people are dead from skydiving and there were like 12 people mm. and she was the only one that had was survived and she was like 60 65 still mm-hmm. jumping <laughs> whoa yeah yeah she had like thirty thousand. Thirty thousand jumps Thirty thousand jumps sounds a bit yeah. like an addiction at that level <laughs> yeah yeah um, yeah but you were also saying that it costs like 25 bucks to go up yes when you own your own gear when you and own your own gear oh, and okay. gear I got it for a steal because my my gear is older than I am. Yeah. <laughs> it works. I've gotten it checked and everything. Everything's fine. It's really, really safe. Uh, but there are four components in a piece. And each I paid was about a grand. But most people spend at least six or eight grand on the gear. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, that's US. So that's like a million Canadian dollars. That's yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because... So I sold my soul. Mm. And now I'm a skydiver. <laughs> <laughs> to do a jump here it's like three or four hundred bucks with the gear they rent with, with the gear yeah, yeah and, i guess like and first time shit. and stuff yeah and to get your license though once you get your license here uh, i think it's about 1400 bucks at your license i looked at it mm-hmm. um that's not bad yeah and then you have to buy your gear same it'll be like four to six thousand canadian i don't think like the there's there's too much of a, a currency hike there but instead of getting 
stopped up on skydiving because I just thought that was super cool. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I just wanted to paint a picture, uh, especially of like the boldness of you coming here. Um, but it, it was a unique fit. Like I just had a good, we had a good vibe. Like, I don't know. I was just like, I knew she'd get along with our friends. Um, and you did. And you shredded on the snowboard. Had fun. And uh, you you boozed with the best of them. Um, but there was other things uh, about you that, like on our car ride home, you, me, and uh, Kevin, producer Kev, mm-hmm. we teleported home from the cottage. Because, I never had that intense of a conversation Because we in were my all life. just in yeah. straight up philosophy <laughs> land. What did I miss out on? <laughs> oh, so much. All of our life story, pretty much. Life stories. I know All everything of- front to back on her life story. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we talked about, you know, uh, manifestation, L- gods, life, sex, uh, dating, work, what happens why when you die, what, psychics, everything. Like the whole, <laughs> the whole nine. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and yeah, it's so weird that you grew up complete. Like she's a total stranger. Like grew up. From a completely different country. Completely different place. Unrelated. No ties to Canada. Nothing. Yeah. Um, and is sitting there t- in the car and we're like, her, me, Kevin, you would agree. And like, I'm sure a lot of the listeners would be on the same wavelength of just like similar values, like kind of similar feelings about everything. Like there's like this like universal kind of doesn't matter where you're from. Like we're all a lot more alike, I think, than we are different or at least... For sure. We f- no, I, I agree. People uh, like find each other. Like, I don't know what it is. It just, it feels like you're like, you went to high school up the street. I and know. You're one of I the know. People that just came up to the, mm-hmm. the cottage. Like it d- does not feel like, Oh, like that's so weird. How, like you have the same fucking values. Like you didn't, you're mm-hmm. honest. You didn't like you, cleaned I'm a up, but yeah, you stole a few things. I got, I got to search your bag. But other than that, <laughs> like you, you cleaned up your, like everything was like, you just did the thing the same, like the same kind of customs, the I, same kind of. It's just awareness. If I could think one thing, one thing it would be, it's just awareness of your surroundings. And I think experiences build awareness mm-hmm. and just getting through life, not in a bad way, but I think getting through things brings this type of awareness to you. Um, and I don't know. I respected you guys and I felt like you guys respected me. And I think if there's a common, I don't know, respect in a relationship of people, Mm -hmm. whether it's like an acquaintance, a friend or whatever, I think that that helps a lot. And I I think it's, I think uh, we probably think it's more crazy because, because you often don't think that that really exists out there. Or you think that like, Oh, people are so different. Like, um, and then, but you know, people with the same values tend to attract people with the same values. Right. right? Yeah. And yeah. you know, and then you, you look at it and you're like, Oh, you know, it's really not that hard to believe that like good people like gravitate towards good people. Well, it was a weird gravitation. Like how this, as I said, it was, it was just unique at the bar and the, the just how everything like lined up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it is a bit of a unique gravitation. And so that normally when we have guests on, uh, we do like, oh, like start from your childhood, start from middle school and what you want to be when you grow up and all these things. But with you, there's like, there's so many unique things at the top that I want to like, like where where you're at right now mentally, the things that you do now that I kind of wanted to like bring them up. Mm-hmm. And if we have time at the end, like we can go and talk about maybe why you felt like the way you do about certain stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing and like not to get not to get too well we can start about um your career okay what uh, i want to do what you're going to do in the next two years and we'll loop back to i was going to talk about uh your your thoughts on like dating and sex and stuff like that because i thought that was unique Mm -hmm. um but i want to talk about what you're about to do with your life um you've explained what you've been doing in the past you did go to college yes you did go to um four years yeah, uh, a graduated. State yep, graduated in December 2019. So just recently, and it was for um, I forget actually what you went for. Communication, right? Digital, digital media, media yeah. uh, stuff like that. So you do some whereabouts? UNCW, University of North Carolina, Wilmington. Cool. Yeah. So she's yeah. got some experience. She's done podcasts and like video editing and and cool stuff like that, which I think is a dope oh, really? degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, so that's why you were like keen skipping on all it the bullshit downstairs, or you're. 
asking about, <clears throat> she was like, asking about how we do such. it. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and like just pretty what pretty typical high school. You said your high school is huge, like so massive. big. I graduated with seven hundred people. Like U.S. just colossal schools. Yeah. Insane. Yeah, and it was crazy because half of my school it was the ghetto, and then half of the school was like there were just people in Charlotte. Yeah. And I was just smack in the middle. Nice. So I was so uncomfortable the whole time. <laughs> you're like, I'm not, I'm not poor. I'm not rich. Literally. What, so what am I? Um, yeah. You're the disappearing middle class is what you are. Yep. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we can, we can go back and pl- pluck stories from all those things. But you talked about what, what you're doing now with all work and stuff. But what you're doing in the future is super cool because you have this weird desire to travel for two years starting in july at least at least I, two like years keep going and um what's that all about i it took me a lot to get through college it was really really hard for me to have like my surroundings i felt like i had to do something but i know if i took four years to do something i didn't want to do then i could have my entire life to do what i wanted and that's mm-hmm. the first thing on my list obviously i'm not going to settle down right now and get a job in quotations of something that I don't want to do, but I'm just saving up and I leave in July. My lease ends in July. So that's why I thought I'd make that timeline. But yeah, I'm bouncing to Hawaii first. Going to go somewhere in the States. Mm. Mahalo. Mahalo. There you go. Uh, Where about Hawaii? Um, Kauai. Cool. That island. Yeah. So I'm going to farm <laughs> that, that thing. <laughs> so I'm doing something called woofing. And it's oh, I've working. heard of this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Working on organic farms in exchange for accommodation and yeah. food. So that's yeah. what I'll be doing in Kauai. I haven't picked my farm yet. What's so funny? I don't know. I'm just, just that hit different, that woofing comment. But anyway, go on. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I feel like woof, or I guess my understanding of woofing was more for uh, people traveling to countries like outside of where the residents yeah, yeah. you're a, you're but already like, a resident you're already a resident well, so i've like why wouldn't you just like get a job at like a bar or something because or? i only want to be there for a couple months because <clears throat> if i i just want to go travel other places yeah i just want like a refresher i just want to relax surf farm like just give back a little bit to the earth because mm-hmm. i don't know i want to be in the middle of nowhere for a little bit and get my start of traveling and then in september or end of september early october my friends in New Zealand currently. So we are going to do each month on each island. So in New Zealand, the North Island, and then on the South Island. So we're just going to rent a van and travel. Cool. And then I'm just going to go ahead and stay and hopefully find a job. I'll have bartending under my belt, uh, nannying. So I would like to be an au pair. I think that'd be awesome working with a family, mm-hmm. um, like a super rich one yeah, yeah. family that would bring me on their little travels, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if not, like a barista job, anything. Or sugar yeah. daddy. I'm willing to do. Yeah, sugar daddy. That's yeah. actually top of the list. Nice. Top of the list. Um, and then what? South Africa. Yes. And then my sister will be getting married. She currently lives in South Africa with her fiance, obviously. She gets married in December 2021. So if I'm already somewhere, I don't want to come back to the States and mm-hmm. then go to her wedding. So I'm just going to find Have you been over there to yes, visit her yet? I yeah. have. I've been there for three and a half weeks. You like it? It was so beautiful. So yeah. cheap as well. Whoa. Uh, small crime for sure like is a worry. Lots of crime, just yeah. small, very very small crime. Like you can't leave like anything you in your punched, car. You just get, get punched in the shoulder like, or something. Y- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like ah, small crime. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> you like that one? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, no, that's uh, that's wild. And you know what? We had this conversation too. I was like, some people, I think, travel because they think it's gonna like change their lives change who they are give them perspective uh and i think it does that to a degree but if they just travel and observe i don't think it has as profound of an effect as if you like immerse work try to try to become different people along the way as well like work on a farm work in a bar try to make i don't know i'll make friends make friends but like i mean like try to make (laughs) like if you're actually going to change your perspective like explore actually experimenting with different things like make some more videos yeah make make some pottery do do like do things in different places where you can actually not only observe but like try to like share my knowledge and gain knowledge from other people in different locations and potentially even experiment like with your new perspective changing yourself like okay like i'm gonna try like things that people want to try like okay i want to try being more of like a extrovert at the bar and out and meet people network or something 
because you're observing in your travels that you know we're all the same and this is an example i'm just like painting yeah, an example yeah. like maybe you travel and you realize that we're all a lot more similar than we are different and you want to be more confident you want to try that like i would say experiment like you're in a new place no one knows you there's not a lot of consequences to like trying to be different parts of your own personality and then and see what you like best exactly. within yourself then yeah. that, i think that's when traveling becomes really reflective when you not only get or really beneficial you get the perspective and you also self-experiment and then you come home and you're like i know who i am like a lot a lot better yeah and that is 100 percent the journey that i'm on um i've just been giving so much to myself and learning so much about myself and i just think that's the perfect time to expand that to go travel and learn more about myself and other places and bring back my knowledge i don't know i think the reason I loved like this situation coming to Canada, like I'm meeting a whole new group of people We're actually with the... all different types of knowledge. I don't know. I've, mm -hmm. I've learned a lot from you since Thursday. And I think like that's what I'm going to take away from this trip. Well, you so lucked out. Like... That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. We are the coolest people in Canada. It's <laughs> ranked. There's a, there's a mm -hmm. board outside of our town hall. So you lucked out. Yeah. We're the coolest, smartest people in Canada. Richest. Um, what else? Poorest. Poorest, too. Also the poorest. Most debt, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> but you, yeah, you said something cool. You're like, I think, uh, you, you're like, I'm not too spiritual. I'm not too, or you're not that you're not spiritual. You're like, I'm not too, like, uh, crazy about, um, I forget how you put the words, but you're like, I, people come into people's lives at the right time, and, like, you people are attracted to each other at the right time. and Always. Yeah. I, and I, there's no way to explain it. Um but I love, I, I love just going with the flow of those things. And just our situation, I don't do that. I don't go to places. I don't go hang out with people after a bar. Like, I, don't, I don't do that. But I remember looking at you specifically and being like, okay, yep, that's something in my Isn't gut that weird, telling though? me to do something. And I don't know, listening to my gut has never been a bad decision as what I've experienced. Mm -hmm. It may happen in the future, but I always listen to it and it always works out. So that's why I found this so fascinating is because it just, it, it seems so weird. I don't know. Just because you said too, that you would, you would like not been with a guy for like a year mm -hmm. and you, ha and you just like show up at elbow room in Fort Lauderdale. I'm there wearing a weird shirt, looking like an idiot. And you're like that guy. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I don't know. Um, yeah. But, and then, yeah. So I was, I have a, I'm a decent at picking up on, you know, I'm a decent judge of character. And just yeah. like the time I spent with you, even though we were uh, wasted, and I barely, I didn't even remember you had an accent, which is funny. I have an accent. You have an accent. God. Yeah, for sure. That I didn't know her age or anything. I just knew you were good Do you think good we have person. an accent? What? Do you think we have an accent? Some of you. You guys all sound very, very different. Um, what was it? Well, from Quinn. the weekend? Quinn. 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 Yes, okay. She, Shout out, Quinn. <laughs> she okay. had... She had more of an accent for sure. And I didn't know if it was just her fluctuation in her voice. Yeah. But yeah, you guys definitely have a little bit of accent. It um, comes out. Okay. For uh, sure. Well, okay. Well, I, that's what I'm saying. I didn't even remember. Like that. that's how I'm, I'm just trying to paint a picture. I, we hardly fucking knew each other. Mm -hmm. um, but I got the good. I knew you're just a good person. Like you just figure that out early. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to you're gonna have to host everyone down in Wilmington. That'd be a fun trip. Would it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> small. Very um, small. But what I wanted to say is, so you said you learned some things from being up here. You got some, you know, what, what, whatever you got out of it. I also learned a few things from you that I thought were like crazy cool on the, like not to get too graphic, not to get Kay. too into the things, uh, the details of it, but your like ideas about like sex mm -hmm. and all that. Where yeah. You, where yeah. Like, I'm willing to share. Extremely unique. Yeah. Um, and what else was it? Oh, there's one more thing. Your opinions on anyway. I'll think about it. But okay, we can talk about sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's something else. You had a good fucking. It's bugging me. Hmm. Where do we start? Where do we start? Ask me a question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll answer it. Okay. So, for you, mm -hmm. for us. When yeah. we have, when at least in my experience, when I have sex with girls, a lot of the pressure, not the 
if, if whether it's real or just perceived, a lot of the pressure is on the guy to know what he's doing, know where all the right parts are, like piece it all together, mm-hmm. last, um, bring it home, like get yeah. ba- get her off, all these things. And the girls <clears throat> kind of, I don't know what why, but they consistently have bad sex with guys because they just don't say anything. They don't say anything and they just wait to see what he can provide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even if even if the girl's like, no, I take control in sex or whatever, I do whatever, they're not talking. She She's just someone who's like, will get on top. And like, like, that's pretty much it. When the girl says, I take control in sex. Yeah. But they're not talking. The guy doesn't learn anything. And maybe that girl can get herself off if the guy can can last long enough. Yeah. But if there's if not, then it's just a total miss. Well, what's crazy is I just took a gender and sexuality class and I learned so much about the percentage of women that don't have orgasms during sex. Yeah. It made me depressed. What 30%. Was that? 30%. Or 30% of women have, have. orgasms during okay. sex. 30%. So 70% aren't in the getting US. off. Yeah. 70% are just leaving dissatisfied and I know the feeling. Because, you know, when I was first having sex, you know, when I was 16, you know, I would sit there. He'd be passed out. He's like, hell yeah. And I'm sitting there like, um, I got to do something about this. Like, I'm still horny. Yeah. Like, I'm going to have to go to the bathroom and do something myself. And just as I've gotten older and more experienced, I've realized that is so difficult. Like, a vagina is so, so difficult. How would they know? Just- How does everybody know each other's bodies without talking <clears throat> about it? Yeah. And... Uh, I think a big thing is just talking about it. Like th- you need to move there because I'm not feeling anything over there. So why not talk about it and get the most pleasure out of yeah, people a sexual don't like to interaction? Talk. Yeah. And it's, it's like, not, not, it's, it's not, not to, it's not weird. It wasn't it's just unsexy either. And it's not like, okay, so this is what it is. It's not even that the female like body is complex. It's that also each girl is extremely different. Mm-hmm. And w- so it, you can't just learn like, I, I consider myself someone with enough experience and someone who is interested enough to care about the the other party that I took an interest and in, tried to figure out what works and, and how to have good sex. Uh, and I still felt with every new person a lot of anxiety and stress about how to please that person. Whereas if it was just like more of like, that's what, so what was unique about you uh, right off the bat was you were like, hey, more of that. A little mm-hmm. bit less of that. Mm-hmm. No, this feels good. And like, how like, what, How do you want to do this? Because the end goal is obviously for both of the parties involved yeah. but like it, to it's, have orgasm. It's like weirdly hot. And like, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like you think it would be the opposite. You think yeah, you think like, it like turn it off. You want like yeah. just like P- Pablo to come in and like Fabio or whatever with his long hair and just like. Just to know. Yeah, just be, just yeah. to know and like whisper in your ear or whatever. But you, you can do all that. But the comfort level from just like chatting and being like just really chill about it made everything better. Um, it took the pressure off me too because now I know what I'm doing is good because I don't You're have to thinking worry. thinking about I'm it. not thinking about it. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest, it just creates a better result like for mostly for the woman. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Well, just considering that it's, it is statistically more difficult for women too. That's yeah. just what I'm basing like my knowledge off of. Um, Cause I talk to a lot of female friends. It's so funny. Cause they'll be like, he was good. He was good. Or the males will say she was good. She was good. She was bad, whatever. Yeah. And it's funny. Cause it's not he or she, it's both parties involved that yeah. contribute to it. And I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not going to be dissatisfied. So <laughs> no. And I, I felt way better thinking I'm like, providing that you know what i mean because mm-hmm. anyway i thought that was super cool and that was one of the unique things you brought and i i think just, more women need to do that because if they're not getting off and they're upset okay say something like say something for, it's for easy example, right like, yeah um first time you know i i didn't have an orgasm and i was like okay well y- you gotta go down there like i'm, I'm not just gonna sit here <laughs> and yeah. i didn't say it like that of course i was just like hey like would you be able to do this like so we can yeah. kind of have a balance and it, it worked out and it was great yeah. she's and- just like she's like <clears throat> um i was like we're we're actually having sex um for a decent amount of time because we're both drunk mm-hmm. and i was about to get there and you're like i'm not 
I'm not. He went, mm-hmm. but don't worry. Like right after, you know what I mean? I was like, I don't know if I can do that. I basically said that. So like, he, yeah, he did. I, uh, like, we I ended know what I'm doing. or like I, I finished and she's like, yeah, like, you know, like and now we can take care of me. And I was like, I don't know if I can just do that. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, yeah. I don't hardly know you. Right. So yeah, I was like, yeah. and you're like, no, no, don't worry. I'll just tell you exactly what to do. And then I was like, oh, that's like not at all what I was, I thought she was going to say, finish me off. And then I would have to just like figure it out, figure it out. Yeah. 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 Which maybe if I knew someone or had a, a longer relationship with, of course I could, but I don't. <laughs> and you're like, no, no, I'll just tell you exactly what to do. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay. And she did. And it worked. And I was like, that was so refreshing. I was like, just, she, she just like that, that. Oh, okay. A little softer. A little more up. Oh, okay. Oh okay. my God. Okay. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 It's not, that wasn't graphic, was it? No, 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 no. Or was that like... I <laughs> well, know. I just think the base of it is like communication. That's all it is. Yeah, like yeah. I'm just trying to like paint a picture. Yeah, For yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so I beep all that out. Just <laughs> It's going to sound even dirtier. <laughs> if you beep it all out, it's going to be like beep, 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 beep. Um, refresh it. And so obviously I wasn't surprised when you came here and I, like we chatted about it. I was like, I thought that was cool. We talked about like the philosophy of it. and it ended up just making for like probably the the most close to I, ideal like s- sex that I've had just in terms of like re- results and like, during and pressure mm-hmm. and happiness. And I mean, it was yeah. to the point where I realized I, I was just like, um, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Um, it's easier for a woman to get off for me with a vibrator like during sex and we went to the store here in can in canada and got one like to make yeah. it more comfortable for us you know yeah. what i mean like i mean like, it's why, to not that be open. It's like, like why not be open and it made it so much better for me if that's what that does okay cool it made it better and, like, for me his ego was not in the way to the point where it's like oh well like i can't do that it's like Fuck he no, understood I know I can't do that, that he couldn't do that and that's okay yeah. and then you two aren't like beating around the bush the entire weekend and being like oh like Dude, the vibe I'm not so satisfied. bad i'm not yeah, satisfied yeah, yeah. yeah my for for me the because for guys it's so easy to finish mm-hmm. um for me the best part about sex is always um the girl <laughs> obviously her her having a good time and the, like the journey kind of up to it and when she was like she's like oh i like using this a vibrator like can we go to the sex store or like are you feeling emasculated by that i'm like emasculated like Give me all the tools. I want to go in there with an arsenal. Like, <laughs> give I, like, me the tool belt. <laughs> give me the tool belt. Like, I, it, 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 it takes the pressure off. Like, I want the girl to have a good time. And if she's like this complex thing that needs all this extra attention, then yeah, let's get the help. I'm just, I'm just picturing you like walking in the bedroom with yeah, the with tool the holsters. Belt. Yeah, I'm like all these sex toys. Which one you want to use? They're just like spinning, what you like, <laughs> like cuffs, like rope. I got yeah. a lasso. Yeah. Anyway, it's like a, it's a bit of a joke, but like. It it really it, and it takes the pressure off too because uh, guys aren't totally in control of when they do and don't come. It's a it's a total array of factors, and uh, it just it just really helped. Fuck, and it and it works. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, so that what are you looking at? Um, I got to roll. Pretty no t- worries. We'll continue. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Later, later. Later. We'll we'll just keep going here. Um, okay. <clears throat> I kind of forget exactly where we at on that but that was like kind of wrapping that up pretty good yeah yeah for sure um it's just it's just something that i didn't notice at least our culture has created here with the people i've been with not to say that i haven't had good sex or mm-hmm. bad sex or everything in between i've just it, it's just been up to factors out of kind of my control mm-hmm. or like you know like whereas at least if you communicate anyone can have good sex anyone can anyone can because you know what you want and that's what I want to do. I want to, I want to share to women as well. I have multiple friends that are not comfortable masturbating and pleasuring themselves. So if they don't know themselves, how are they supposed to be able to go into sex knowing what they want? And it's, it's so awesome because, uh, I, I got this vibrator and I told my friend about it and she got it. And these two girls, we, we actually went on a Valentine's day date. And we were talking, me and my best friend were talking about it. Mm-hmm. We're like, yeah, like, can't, can't wait to go home and use our vibrator, like, whatever. Like, yeah. And they're like, what? Like, you get excited to go home and do that? And I'm like, 
what? Yeah, because we like are consider- in our mid twenties, and you're not doing that, and like that's okay. But we sat there right then and bought two vibrators for them, oh and they were texting us like, "Oh my god!" And they are now like exploring their bodies and now understanding and feeling comfortable with themselves. So then they can go into a bedroom and be comfortable with somebody else, hopefully. And this, you were saying that what you don't know exactly what you want to do as a career, mm-hmm. but you said you that feels good when I talk about it. Yeah, you said you feel really good um with helping women like yeah. with stuff like this yeah. uh, especially because women a lot of times are the victims of like the worst societal norms yes uh, you yes, know we, what men and women it's it always yeah, it's use, a balance it's a balance, balance but, for sure um especially with like looks and confidence and sex and boys and stuff it gets real different real quick because there is no communication and guys do clearly want different things in girls a mm-hmm. lot of the time mm-hmm. and be- if, if we don't chat then it's like um, it just gets fucking messy. Yeah. But you also have a bit of a masculine demeanor when it comes to like friendships and uh, dating and stuff like that. And you said it comes from having a lot of male friends. Or like, where did that come from? I don't know where mm. I learned how to hang, but <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Um, I don't know. I mean, even in middle school. I was getting, I've had two, I had two guy friends and they're still my friends to this day. Like I've always just gotten along with males better. I don't know what that's about, but we've had this conversation. Um, what I have seen in a pattern as far as my relationships with friends in males tend to bond to each other and create big groups of friends and share this commonality. Mm -hmm. And then for women, as far as I have seen and experienced, I see one on rela- one on one relationships so much more thriving for me, um, and it's just so funny to join in on a friendship of a group of guys. For example, I came to college and uh, met my boyfriend, and we had this big group of, of guys. It was like, I'd say five to eight guys, and then me all the time, and it, it I became a part of this bond, and mm. it was the greatest feeling. Honestly, it was so nice to like share this big bond with a group of males. And I just learned a lot about what guys like in girls and, yeah. and it just kind of like shaped mentality it, about dating yeah, and sex yeah, and all that. Stuff. Exactly. And like, I was, you know, 18 at the time. So I am just, I just left my hometown. I'm reinventing I did not, yourself. I did not thrive. I hadn't even found myself at all. Cause mm. I, in high school, I did not, I did not thrive at all. And so I came to this new place and I was just like, this is who I am. Like, let's mold let's mold let's just yeah. like find who i am and i didn't even have that intention it's just looking back i now know that that shaped such a huge part of my life well, and I, relationships with people guys and girls do certain things better than the other and i, I wish do, we came together more right. as friends and just was like or rather just was than, more like like uh objective about mm-hmm. like it's male relationships for the most part and like as you said and i know my friends of mine that are girls that have great groups of girlfriends Mm -hmm. but in terms of statistically probably more so it's guys with these great groups of friends um that just like i I was saying i legitimately get like a feeling of like euphoria or dopamine when i link up with the the lads (laughs) when like the lads are like let's get a beer watch the leaf game or have dinner like whatever it's like you're like buzzing Mm -hmm. it's like a weird thing guys are just really good at forming these relationships they're not at least in my experience is like catty backstabby dishonest like any of the stuff that i saw with a lot of like my ex's friends or like just in friend groups of girls all the at least drama that would make it to my ears i'm like this is chaos yeah Uh, that's why i think girls tend to thrive more on a one-on-one because it's yeah, yeah it's just i have so many types and different types of friends and it's awesome because we all have an individual relationship and we're able to share things as like more of a couple Mm. um and i think women tending to have emotional more emotional brains i'm not saying that just because we are the way we are but it's because we do have the capability of or just the ability to have children and like children being able to do Put that and be that, that all that strong and yeah, yeah yeah is what i've heard it's horrible and i think we've just got something a little bit different and yeah i think that 
<laughs> this, is jo- this is jokes. What's going on behind us? I know. Uh, the the, the mics won't pick that up. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, like that. But that goes to dating too. Like, how how do you? How does your mentality then translate to hookups, dating guys, like casual relationships, like all those things? What do you think girls and guys get out of it? The benefits of doing things a certain way. Does that make sense? Like, uh, what would be your opinion on casual relationships or on hookups oh. uh, as guys, as girls, or, or oh. as dating stuff like that? I think the biggest problem we have is humans, which can go to any category mm. is communication. Yeah. Communication. Like for example, you know, I have someone I was, um, I've been friends with benefits be- with before a couple of different people like that. And as long as we're communicating, it's fine. Yeah. You know, as long as you're communicating in any relationship you have and everyone's being clear with their intentions, I think, and keeping your own individuality, even with your best friends, yeah, best friends, family, realizing you only have control of over yourself and like you go to bed with yourself at night. I yeah. think that really helps with dating. Um, just first relationship. I gave my entire heart, yeah. my entire self to somebody else. And when you break up with that person, then you realize, Oh my God, I literally lost my complete self. Yeah. You're- and you know, that's like a lesson. Of course I learned, but I can't wait for my, ne- well, I can't wait, but I can't wait for my next relationship because I'm going to be, I'm going to know so much more about keeping my individual life and self and self love. And so yeah. you don't think that any of them are good or bad, like natural. You don't think that hooking up with someone having a casual long-term thing or dating is bad as long as it's communicated that you're both on the same page with what you're doing. Yeah. And especially like intentions, like mm-hmm. say, you know, I got in a relationship with somebody right now and I'm leaving in July. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. We both know that you need to know like what's going to happen. I'm not going to change my life. So it's like you can get hurt in a casual relationship if one grows feelings and if people don't talk about those feelings. Yeah. Cause I feel like that happens a lot in friends with benefits or just casual. Time. It's like, this is casual. And one of the parties gets more involved and you don't talk about it. And as soon as you feel that you need to be, just be aware that it can hurt you in the end. Well, the, the thing though, and the other person can't read your mind. The thing is, uh, what I found and what I kind of want to ask you about, cause you do have a bit more of a, can I have some of your coffee? Mm-hmm. You do have a bit it's more water. of a, like it's water. It's water. It's water. Oh shit! That was black because of the mug yeah, on the yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I do want to ask this because I know this isn't always the case where the girl gets more attached than the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, because I know guys that get attached. Yep. In in yep. friends with benefits relationships, but at least in my experience, because I am a very non emotional person as like a base level, I can have. I can have and enjoy casual relationships very easily. Mm-hmm. Like go on like dates where it feels like boyfriend, girlfriend, mm-hmm. treat someone really well, just enjoy that. Yeah. And I have the rationality to understand that with my career, with my lifestyle, with the amount of time and money I have to give um, and the amount of emotions I have inside, I really don't have what it takes at this moment to, to provide to provide yeah and i don't have the desire to either because i'm i'm being a little bit selfish yeah. with my career path and my right so well but but what ends what ends up happening and you can comment yeah. on it you can and there, there who knows why and you might mm-hmm. have opinions but um at least in my experience i have casual relationships and i communicate all of that yep i, I do. know what you're about to say okay <laughs> and uh i i make it as you said with communication i make it as clear as i can that you know i can do all that we can go on dates if you want to have a good time and then all this stuff and if it ever becomes not fun for you just let me know mm-hmm. and it's not that i'm closed off to the idea of a relationship if something develops naturally i'm not going to fight it yeah yeah but like that's just what traditionally is happening and right now in your life right now in my yeah, life yeah yeah um and then it usually and it ends up at some point like you said um going to a place where i'm starting to upset the person i'm seeing mm-hmm. because you know I think feelings develop and I used to think that it was a female trait just a fe- yeah. when, when a girl has sex with a guy and she you know feels the or- like female orgasm I think is really powerful and I think it creates feelings of it love really does and like because attachment that ex- it's such a crazy experience that you attach it like with mm-hmm. a person um I also think I've been on the other side of that and it's the challenge oh I, I, you didn't, I don't, I didn't know what it was at the time, but it's like, oh, I can, I can handle this. And then you get feelings 
and then you have to step back like yeah in every situation i've been in i was like i have to step back because i'm getting feelings okay cool. so, we can be friends and it's fine so you think it you is you need to catch yourself you need to be aware you need to i don't know write down to keep your brain i don't know like at the beginning of the relationship yeah like i would journal and say okay this is friends with benefits this is strictly casual if motions get evolved end it you gotta back out yeah yeah you gotta back out and so if you keep that reminder and realize okay like if you're stepping that boundary you're just gonna hurt yourself yeah you, you, yeah. yeah so because i don't know what it is I, maybe it is the fact that we are able scientifically to, they scientifically scientifically they say that when girls uh orgasm certain chemicals are released that simulate and create like f feelings of love mm -hmm. and detachment uh, whereas guys don't have the same yeah uh, the same chemical process so it doesn't mean guys don't fall something. in love with girls and, and vice versa. It's just physically girls are getting feelings that they may not understand and they're attributing because I'm not a, de a desirable partner. That's what I, at least at the moment, okay. like, oh, yeah, with yeah, all that oh, I yeah, said, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah, I'm like, hmm? <laughs> with everything that I'm saying, like the same way as technically right now, you wouldn't be a desirable partner with mm -hmm. what you're about to do. Yeah, I'm so, not. Right. So I'm like, leaving that, that's what I'm saying. By myself. But if the, if this physical process can make them see me in this other light, whereas like then it's that's not reality. That's a reality reality altering chemical experience. That's and then the more you think about someone as well, the more you like them, and the less attainable they are as girls, a hundred percent always. The more you like them, well, it's just like anyone in general. It's like anyone you can't have, you want more. Sure, but not but not for me. Not for you. No. Um. Maybe maybe one day if I if. I don't know, but like for, so for you, um, I know you're unattainable at the moment because you have all, all that's coming for two years. You live in some other place. It really just, and you're not, you said it. You're like, I'm just, I'm gone. Uh, it didn't make me like want, it didn't change anything. Yeah, yeah, I just, well, it just, it just, I wanted you to, I want the same mm -hmm. as before. I like you mm -hmm. and I thought it was, I, but I understand that as much. It didn't like, create a reaction that was not rational in me of like being like no just that you're unattainable yeah, Do you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. i don't know that's true that's it's hard true. to explain um because i i understand that i also have something going on and like it doesn't mean that you need to worry about not worry about yourself but you want to take all your time right now to yourself because yeah. you're creating your future for yourself right now and that's that's really important and i don't see the urgency of uh things right now and for all we know we could link up again in like when you're back like mm -hmm. it doesn't nothing i'll is, call you in two years exactly <laughs> like it's like, so it doesn't that doesn't affect me as much but i i see this this pattern repeating and it's not just communication on because i've done the communication yeah, i think it really yeah. is education on the female side and i think that's what you're good at because you have and this is like our Awareness. friend Kristen is the same way because she understands guys a bit more. She's like the female bridge between guys and girls because mm -hmm. you understand the female mind because you you have one and you're, you got all these girlfriends, but because you have all these guy friends as well, you know exactly how we think. Um, and you can like be that like interpreter, be like, Hey, yeah. the guy's thinking this, mm -hmm. the guy's feeling this like, so girls do this, do that or mm -hmm. vice versa. And I think that you can actually help people a lot. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of my friends back home say that I need to be some type of motivational speaker just because I or have like these a coach, like a Yeah, yeah, I have like these coach. these opinions and these I don't know. I've had these experiences where I just it, it works. It works. Um so yeah, like it, motivation is like sounds weird because I picture like Tony Ro Tony Robbins yeah, like yeah, yeah. or like Wolf of Wall Street guy being going crazy. I mean, just like Someone who has a way to get this information to people mm -hmm. that would help them. Yeah, um, I'd love to do that. Because it, it honestly will make your life better. You're a happy person and you've had some shitty things happen to you and you, you haven't had the easiest, most comfortable life and you're happy, mm -hmm. which is, so that means it's attainable. Mm -hmm. It um, is. And happiness. It's for, a decision for right. sure. It's not a journey. But happiness like a comes from perspective. Yeah. If you don't have perspective, you have no idea yeah. That nothing means anything. I could look at my life and say that everything is against me. God's against me. All the whatever life is just going against me. Or I could say, oh no, I'm taking this experience and I learned an insane amount of knowledge about myself. Yeah. 
and other people around me and relationships and et cetera, just everything. And I can move forward and share that and Cause, cause that's with other what helps people. people. Yeah, because in a big room of people, there are going to be a lot of people that are going through very, very similar things. Mm-hmm. And when you talk about it, it's so interesting because then you realize how many people are like you in situations that you've been through. No, it's cool. And I, I don't think we got too graphic on that. And I, like with the, the sex and all that stuff, that's yeah, another <laughs> thing that is kind of a little bit taboo. And so taboo. we had this chat where with what we believe in the perspective that we have social norms don't necessarily make whatever right and wrong. Just because society, a group of people, Mm -hmm. they're just people that before you told you life was a certain way, but they're humans at the end of the day. So you can't take anything they say as gospel and you can't take societal norms as gospel. But the problem is, is then how do we judge what's good or bad if we don't take societal norms, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to sex and casual relationships growing up, um, in Canada, our our norms, and especially with like my Christian Catholic ish upbringing, you know, thinking sex is bad, casual sex is bad, masturbation is bad. Society still really reflects that, and it makes it feel dirty talking about it. It makes it feel like mm-hmm. I'm now like I've done something bad just even like talking about it. Mm-hmm. When that's the at least from what I believe, the opposite of the truth that people are actually benefiting more. Yeah. The reason though those those societal norms exist is because historically, without the right education, being promiscuous is bad. You can, all these things can happen. And especially for girls, um, you know, they can get very taken advantage of because they have those strong feelings for guys. And guys are so rational, or not rational, but uh, they can be calculated and, and mischievous. Like historically, I think those societal norms have value. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't make, so... Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like they're both really meaningful to society to follow. But if you have the right perspectives, technically you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and, and what you need to really keep in mind when making decisions about your morals and such, you need to sit back and reflect and realize, am I running away from something? Mm-hmm. Am I, you know, something from my personal experiences, you know, it, my parents being divorced or whatever, is there some need in me that I'm trying to fill? You need to be, you need to reflect on yourself and your intentions because I think that has a big, um, that's just super important when making decisions about your morals and just realizing that social norms aren't what you want to live by. If you don't have the perspective, if you're a person that hasn't quite reached a point where you understand that you are not your emotions, that you're the person b- above the voice in Letting your head. Letting go of that ego that, that we live by. That if that person makes fun of you, you embarrass yourself cosmically. It's so meaningless. It's really the only meaning that that event has to you is how much meaning you put on it. Yes, that um, is something I am working on So there's these sure. always like base <laughs> levels of perspective that make me a happy person because of just how I can perceive things. If you don't have that though, and you're someone who is reactionary, is very much in the tide. So easy in to the get stream. in that old tide. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're there, societal norms are a great place to start mm-hmm. because they do, they're there to protect people. People are, their societal norms are there because they're trying to pass down knowledge. There's a cultural and like evolutionary reason, I think, why societal norms exist. Um, but what makes societal norms crazy is if you go to Norway, they're upside down and different. Mm-hmm. If you go to America, this state versus that state, they're completely different. Mm-hmm. So they're not gospel. Yeah. It's just they they're work not for universal. the people that live there. And if you don't like them, that doesn't mean you're wrong by any means or you should feel bad. And if you have the perspective to fi- actually know what's good for you, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Mm-hmm. Um, and that if that means you want to hook up with that guy over there and you know, you know enough about yourself to know, oh, I'm going to feel like I like this guy right after I hook up with him and but I also know the dangers of being promiscuous like practice safe sex and as long as I check these boxes and I I make sure he's not dangerous like there is not a consequence to this action I don't need to feel like a slut or anything Mm -hmm. because there really is no physical consequence yeah Uh, and you're gonna have to be like okay I like this guy a little bit because we've just had this intimate moment do I really like him uh 
Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> moving on. You know Probably what I mean? not. Moving on. <laughs> but someone with perspective can do that. And my whole question, and the reason I have this podcast is I thought at some point I could understand how to get more of this perspective or how to give it to people. And I still haven't figured that out. I don't think people can gain perspective just by listening. The no, same, no, the no same, way. There's no way. The same way with traveling. We would all be amazing human beings if that was the case. Because right. you would hear something one time and be like, oh, I got it. I'm going to change it. I think like, no, you have to experience. Yeah, things. It's, it's all it's negative things. Usually uh, as people well, see them as negative things. Neg- exactly. Negative things are what my concussions, my injuries for years made me change. Mm-hmm. And I got me out of the tide because I wasn't the tide. I was in stream. I was doing exactly what society laid out. And I thought I was acting on what I wanted mm-hmm. until I got knocked completely out of the system. And I, had no pressures on me and I like looked around and actually thought about what I wanted and what it all meant. And it was in like the years of being concussed and only self-reflecting because that's all you can do when your head is broken is you you think about mortality. You think about like, it's your brain. You, 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 I thought who I was, was this thing until you get knocked in the head. Then you realize that you were none of that. You were none of those things. And you're actually, separate from your thought because your thoughts can mislead you and deceive you and and can be damaged when i don't know anyway not to get too too down that train but with people just like with traveling seeing things can give you pieces of perspective listening to podcasts can give me pieces and and especially if you have the perspective to apply now that we have perspective i can hear things and apply it Mm -hmm. but it is that experimentation and application in the actual doing of things that next step that, that really gets all. it in that right basically hardwiring your brain experiences as well experiences are either forced on you through bad things happening to you mm-hmm. or you have to put the effort in to do it that's why a lot of times unless something bad happens to people they don't ever gain the perspective because i know it's I, forced on you when something when yeah. something awful happens to you it's forced on you yeah you have to react yeah. And you're learning from it. Mm-hmm. If your life is comfortable and nothing ever bad happens to you, you will likely never have the urge to experiment on change. Yeah. And 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 escape from the tide. And you don't know what you want. You don't know what kind of person you want to be because mm. you haven't seen the other side. Yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. If you see the other side, you're like, I don't want to be that. And that's how I think we should go through life is just kind of going, you know, looking in front of us and taking it's like a shopping cart it's like taking what you want out of it and applying it to your cart you know your little cart and just going with that and and keeping all the shit behind you know and this is something that i see in the people that i find somewhat successful um, Mm -hmm. at least in success means a bunch of different things like people that are happy or people that do have a good career or people that are, are creating cool things often they reference these principles even if they don't truly understand why or how life made them the way they are the principles are there that they are focusing on actions, mm-hmm. the next step in front of them, just making that next best step. Yeah. And not worrying about too much of thinking about what's best and, and all that. Doing a little bit of that, you do need to plan. But if you try to always think about the absolute best way to do it from start to finish that whole path, you'll never, ever be able to guess that. Yeah. But if you lay out a general path, like I want to get over there. That's it. I know I want to get over there. I think I have an idea of where how to get there and just really focusing on what's like the first thing I can do. Well, I don't really know. But and just start. You, just start. So like, um, okay, you know what? I want to become the president of the US. I don't know how to make that happen. I have You're a, the mayor of whatever. Yeah, exactly. So like, what's the first thing I can do? I'm going to be uh, the mayor of uh, my, my community. Yeah. All right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, th- that's the best first step you can make. Mm, yeah. And and then start, like, go from there. Because when you become the mayor, you meet some people that are deeper in politics. Oh, how did you get there? Like, each step opens up the next steps. And, and you also learn about yourself. Yeah, and I think, we were talking about this earlier, It's that's creating your life, mm-hmm. which I with think intention. is... With intention. And I think that's that carries over as manifestation, as we call it now. But I we were talking about our perspective, I think is creating your life. Yes. Exactly how you just explained. That is what opens those doors. And when you realize that, you realize it's all on you. It's all on it's you. It's all on you. 
So it, get your shit together and get out there and do what you want. It, it, and that, <laughs> like that's why two people that have the the world is against me mentality, I think are are some of the most mm. unfortunate people. Miserable. Um, even even because this this perspective can help people with depression, anxiety, and stuff like that if they understand their their depression is chemical and not a part of their uh who they are then they have to fight it they can fight it like an affliction like a like a hurt part of their body and not mm-hmm. like it's uh you know it, it makes it right or, yeah it, it, uh, who they are oh yeah. i'm a depressed person like you can just be like i'm like with someone who's got like a concussion problems i have them all the time the day i learned that my head injury issues were coming from more my neck and that my brain was actually okay was like this big weight off my shoulder because I didn't think the core of who I was was broken. I yeah, realized that it was a physical damage. mechanism that I could maintain and take care of and look after. And I don't know, I just, just th- that changed things. And I, I forget where I was going with the whole depression and perspective and manifestation thing. Oh, so people that are sad and they think the world's against them and they, they go out and they go, you know, I've had such a shit life and my life is worse than yours. Look how bad things are. So people owe me things and stuff like that they are the most wrong people on the planet because then you can just take a look at them and give me a day and I'll find someone a thousand times more unfortunate than them. Mm-hmm. A million times mm-hmm. in the world. Mm-hmm. And they just can't see it. That just because somebody has an easy life doesn't mean they owe you anything. Just because someone has a hard life doesn't mean you owe them anything. Your only obligation is to make your situation better. Mm -hmm. And that will attract people that will help you. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't like living in the past, but I think reflecting on the past as you get older and realize more about who you are, you just get more and more grateful. I've gotten more and more grateful for the experiences that I've had. Good and bad. Yeah. Good and bad because it has made me really, really happy with myself. I'm very, very happy with who I've become and who I am becoming. Can we talk about um, mm-hmm. the one episode you had with uh, like the the mental breakdown before we wrap up the podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so just to preface, because I, I, we can't go maybe too, too deep in this yeah. with the time we have. Yeah, over it. But you had a bit of a, a rough coming up early days because of a divorce and, you know, just some issues with, you know, not getting along with mom, at least for a period of time. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can. Yeah, breeze just, over just it. touch on it, okay, like you know, touch, like, yeah. like high level. Okay. Um. So, so you said what your mom was. You said you like not in a good place when you were growing up or something. Yeah, yeah. I had two amazing parents. Yeah. Um, and just this divorce just completely changed what happened. Um, my mom just started taking prescription medication, which yeah. is fine. But it became from one to seven yeah. and then using other things. And it completely altered yeah. it altered her brain. It, yeah. it wasn't her it anymore. It wasn't brain. that it's loving yeah. human mom, m- most amazing woman I know. It wasn't her anymore. And my dad kind of left the picture because my mom was so crazy that he couldn't even deal with her. And mm. so, you know, five, now we're 19. Um, she stops taking um, the medications due to an episode. And well, I'm sure the... The, med- the medications led her to do that. Yeah. So like, all these medications in their risks and symptoms always mention suicidal thoughts, yeah. hardcore depression and yeah. all that because they chemically alter your brain. You, you can go super deep and darker than you ever could just with normal fluctuations unless you actually have a broken yeah, yeah, chemical yeah. production center in yeah. your brain. And this doctor was just throwing things to and that's fix what, problems. That's what fucking doctors do. Ugh, like, they, they think they, they know people. everything. They legitimately kill people. Yeah, they think they know everything. Anyway, but, so she has, a, she has an episode um, where she medically died. Yeah, and then just overdosed. Yeah. Um, came back to life um, and came out of her near-death experience a completely different person. The mom that I had before the medication, yeah. she was the exact person. And since that day has been that mom again. And I'm so grateful that it wasn't something that it was um, permanent, that it was temporary. Mm-hmm. But you um, got anyways, a lot of trauma. From oh, a lot of trauma, period. just like verbally, mentally, emotionally abused. Yeah. As time went on, it just got worse and worse and worse. Um, it was just like a ticking time bomb. And then boom, that happened. And 
you know, I didn't even like go vi- like visit her at the hospital. Yeah, it was that bad. Like, you yeah, really yeah. Like I was just she wasn't mom. coming to my funeral. She wasn't coming to my wedding. She was she was never. I was never going to see her again yeah. when I left. I was never going to see her. You again. left high school when your mom was in this awful place, hating her. You yeah, yeah. Never wanted to see her again. Yeah, yeah. And then and she then, had this episode, and a part of you probably felt relieved that. Oh she God, was be I was so pissed when she was alive. Which is a crazy thing to say. Yeah, but it was about the honest, your mother. Yeah. yeah, I was so pissed. I woke up and I was like, Oh, she made it. Like fuck, I have to deal with that for the rest of my life now. Yeah. And since that day, she has not taken any medication and has been the loving mom that she was always so meant to crazy. be. And we're healing and I'm healing from it. And I had to grow up fast. I had to, um, be, it, I think growing up fast just brings this awareness of your surroundings. Mm-hmm. Walking on eggshells kind of builds that awareness as well. Yeah. Um, there are definitely some patterns I'm learning to break out of from that time because it is now a form of complex PTSD. Like yeah. my brain is still figuring out like what life is like when everything's okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, cause my brain will create <clears throat> my life to be shit. Yeah. And it's like, Oh no, no, no. That's just cause you think that's what's normal. And it, it's so great because it's been, you know, 2016, it's been four years now since that episode. And, you know, I'm just constantly healing from yeah. everything. But what happened, what you said, which is crazy, is um, there was uh, um, more trauma than that. That was just yeah. Like that a, was just a, a, that was just the beginning of my life. And <laughs> some other a uh, couple other things that would be uh, traumatic for for you to experience before, like even after your mom got better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A few things happened, and one day you were skydiving. Mm-hmm. And uh, but what doc- yeah, yeah. this was number okay. 89. This was your last guy. Yeah. 89. So I am on the plane up and I'm feeling that fight or flight that's supposed to be happening. It's the greatest feeling in the world. You're getting mm-hmm. this feeling, you're, you're butterflies, you're farting, you're, you're just like so excited. That's you know? also so weird that I've never heard that skydivers are so nervous. They're farting. They're farting always. Like the plane always smells so bad. That's so wild. Um, especially the new jumpers for sure. That's so <laughs> like weird. The tandem. They're like, Oh my God, I'm going to shit my pants. Um, literally. So yeah, so I'm on the way up and like I jump down, you know, I get my release. I have a really good jump, honestly, mm-hmm. really good landing. Everything was fun. Um, and I get down and that fight or flight in my brain is just through the roof. Mm-hmm. Like I'm trying to talk to my coach. We were working on some flying stuff and I was looking at him in the eye like this and like I could like feel the panic. Yeah. I was just full on basically panic attack. So I went outside of my car i'm like next to the car tire in a ball like outside calling my mom like i don't know what's happening to me but like i need to get out of here and i thought it was just i thought it was gonna be okay you know i woke up the next day and like i literally felt like i was insane like i i could not stop or control you were in a psychosis anything in my thoughts it was a psychosis yes and so i lasted about five days until like I wanted to commit suicide Yeah, because I, cu- I couldn't take it. It was crazy. I couldn't eat, sleep. I couldn't even think yeah. about one thing. I couldn't think about a thing for a single second without it just like looping off. Oh my God. Into, yeah. I now know what it feels like to be a mentally ill human in a, like, yeah. In and this happens to hospital. regular people. Yeah. Yeah. You like, were just totally regular. Yeah. And you did something totally normal for the 89th yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, just like I've always done. And you snapped. And it just triggered something. Yeah. It just triggered something. And um, ever since then, I I have been healing like crazy. Of well, course, I came down from that, that five days, got some medication yeah, yes, in me to, to calm me down, went to the hospital, got some medication, um, got to bring me down from my panic state. And ever since then, I've spent, every day working on healing and realizing, okay, like that needed to happen. I needed to hit rock bottom in order for me to start actually healing because it's so funny Mm. because that whole time, this just shows you like life will throw at you what you ignore. Like if you have this gut feeling that you need to do something and you ignore it, it's going to be forced into your life. And I have found that with my life, but yeah, so I would get like into therapy a little bit and realize like, I need to do this. I need to do this. And I was just like, eh, I don't want to do it. And then after this, I had no choice. Yeah. It was like, okay, so it's either die and feel that again or heal. Yeah. So therapy, shaman work, yoga, yoga. I was doing hot yoga every day. I got a membership. Yeah. And I would just spend all my time dedicating it towards myself. 
Well, what's crazy though is right before your episode, you was the first time that you were, um, as you were going through some stuff, mm -hmm. you were using medications and things that were affecting your chemicals, like your- Before? Yeah, right? Like you said- After. No, uh, I thought you had- Oh, uh, yeah. psychedelics? No. No. Like the, you had some like medical procedures that, and you had to oh, take some yes, 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 hardcore yes, yes. Yes. drugs, like, like stuff that really fucked you up. Yeah, I'm just gonna- talk about it okay okay cool yeah right. i mean whatever all right um <laughs> sorry i didn't like she's it's like <laughs> it's something that it's happened so that we didn't know if we that wanted i didn't want to just bring it up yeah, on the public yeah. i'm just not sharing to. this on my social media <laughs> well okay maybe maybe um but yeah okay <laughs> okay okay um yeah so between all that happening like so this nervous breakdown happened, what, June, June, July, 2019. Okay. In March, 2019, I had uh, an abortion and it did not go well. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't work the first time I did the, the pill. And basically it's this massive amount of hormones that like almost kill, it kills your uterus or whatever, the yeah. fetus in the, in the uterus. And it just like takes all that, that, um hormones and just dumps it and what's crazy is like only being like pregnant for like what like seven eight weeks yeah it was like really early it is crazy how much you change like you're you can feel you feel like you have superpowers i literally felt like i could like i had this ball of like fire and i was like you know like i felt like you're insane buzzing. oh my god my body was so happy it's exactly what, what it your wants body to wants do. to do yeah oh my god it was the greatest feeling in the world when I realized I wasn't going to proceed, that's when it was just like, I walked around like a zombie. Well, that's why it's such a hardcore thing. And I didn't know if, if, if you wanted to bring it up because it is actually traumatic. Like, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It happens to so many people. Though. It happens to like, so, many, so people. many people. Yeah. I talked about it with my friends and they're like, I've had one. I'm like, oh, let's talk about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So it didn't work. Um, I had to go back to the hospital because I was bleeding so much. And then I got another dump of those hormones. Mm. And two of those put my body i think just into a spiral yeah and you know from march to june it was like march and then it was like it was like late april may is when i had hormones that are everything thing. right oh my gosh hormones are make what make up your entire body your, and your state of mind yeah, and your, your mental health is... you have one little altar in it and it fucks you up and i think just dumping all those hormones brought all this change. It was like a magnifier, an yeah. accelerator on oh any God. any issues you had. Yeah, it, yeah. It and it like, just created this nervous breakdown. Fuck, that's so wild. It's so crazy. So crazy. I can't believe that that's where I was and it hasn't, It well, it's actually been like a year. Yeah? Yeah, March, it's March. Yeah, and I I can't believe how much I learned in a year. It's, it's so crazy. So it means that even like the, the worst things happen to people. Oh, there's so shit. I thought I was, my life was going to be, yeah. You, oh. you had a five days where you almost got suicidal. And again, if that didn't happen to you, you wouldn't be this. If, okay, this is the a, a sentiment that I always used to say that really helps you when you're feeling like shit is um, if you're happy with where you are at any moment, like even if you're happy for one second, mm -hmm. like you, you get out in the car and it's like a nice day and you're happy and you're healthy and you're feeling good for that one moment, you can't regret a single thing that happened up to that point. And the best way to, to, to overcome bad things. So like there's points where you're not happy, like you have the concussion or you're in a your nervous state or your health isn't good. If you want to have no regrets and live with no regret, the best thing you can do is find the the thing you can do to get yourself to a point you're happy with, and then you can have no regrets. If yeah. that makes sense, yeah. So it's like, oh, I re I regret all this stuff happening to happening to me. I'm in a bad spot. If you can just go find a place you're happy, like just do a little bit of work, like you said, heal a little bit, mm -hmm. then everything was a good thing that's happened in your life. Yeah, because it made yeah. you get there. Yeah, and I could have easily gone down the other path. Right there, there are. I could have, you know, I've got addiction in my family. I've got a lot of things in my family and I could have gone down that route. I could have been like, you know what? Like, fuck all this. Like life sucks. Yeah. Like if the world is against me, God's against me, whoever, whatever. I'm going to burn it all down. I'm just going to like fuck it up. Yeah. And I could have just been a bum. I mean, I really could have. And it's so awesome 
to know that I, I didn't go down that path and I'm going down the best one now. Well, like this is why I said in the beginning of the podcast, especially if you're still listening, because we're about an hour and 30 in, <laughs> it was so unique that this is a stranger and we had such a similar opinion and it's probably something like that that attracted us uh, mm-hmm. in the first place, which is weird to think that humans have maybe some deeper senses that they may, may not be able to perceive consciously yeah, about yeah. people. Or don't have words for it Yeah, yet. but it's it's the reason why we know if we like someone, we become friends with them. There's like a, there's things we can sense that are non-verbal, that are non-obvious about people, even just in small short-term interactions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's and it's super cool, but uh, I think we got a a good chunk of your story mm-hmm. that would help people. At least yeah. the most directly beneficial parts of your yeah. story. Yeah, we we got out to people listening. Mm-hmm. And if I could say anything, is you're not going to change just by hearing that. Maybe try it. Maybe just try. Like you might have some thoughts. Like, oh, maybe that would be nice if I did that. Maybe just try it and see what we're saying about the whole doing, sex or yeah. communication yeah and how healing doing, how doing things is actually what makes you change yeah and and seeing things and and it really is in discomfort that you grow yeah so if you can find places to put yourself in in safe proper discomfort hammer it mm-hmm. um anything else you want to touch on no um I'm just really grateful for this because along with my nervous breakdown that came was some anxiety, um, just anxiety in general. And like this, for example, like I'm, it makes me so happy to think that I'm now comfortable enough as far as like anxiety wise to sit here and And share and talk. I can talk and I know I'm being recorded. Yeah. And I, a year ago that just, it, that was not me. And it, the more people that know your secrets, the happier you are. It's like such a weird thing. I know. I know. It's like, it's all out there. I know. Uh, it feels so good. It's like therapy. Yeah, it, is. <laughs> it really is. That's why. But there are so many people that will listen to this. They'll understand like, oh my God, I, I had a crazy mom. Or like, yeah, I've had an exactly. abortion and it's sucking. Yeah. Like, I don't know how to get through it. Like, I want to learn how to skydive. Like, I want to do all these things. It's like, okay, well, or just I, like hearing- there's another human that's. Experiencing yeah. it. Hearing that Contacting. someone can live the way we live helps people to like, mm-hmm. like I want to travel. I thought I couldn't because mom and dad says no. You society can. says no. You fucking can. So you can do whatever <laughs> you want. It obviously helps if you have advantages in life. But realistically, you you said you didn't really come from a place of no, advantage. No, and I'm not, you know, getting all this money from like my family. Like, You're doing I am, it all yourself. This is all myself. So, I'm just working hard and and then it's all going to pay off. And I'm just going to continue working hard basically for the rest of my life to continue the path that I want. Cause I know that the life I want to live is going to take some damn work. Uh-huh. It's never going to stop. No. And so I need, I'm prepared to do all that work. I really am. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank You're you welcome. for sharing. <laughs> this is our, I think this is our 91st episode. 91st. Yeah. Wow. Um, so I've talked to a lot of people and I get to like you, like it's like therapy. Mm hmm. It is therapy. It is. Like yeah. It, 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 it's, I don't know. It just helps. <laughs> yeah. It really, uh, it's just a good thing. I'm really happy I do it. <laughs> um, but I want to get more. I want to find a way to get more out of it. And it's like I said, just talking is one thing. I got to figure out how to actually implement and experiment a bit more and like mm-hmm. push my comfort zone. So mm-hmm. like that's where I'm looking at now. Yeah. Because I'm getting all the material, all the info I need from all these people. Yeah. They're serving it up to me. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I'm still in a lot of patterns and a lot of stuff that um, I want to like experiment out. Yeah. Of. Yeah. Well, you but, got your whole life. So start now. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that's Tatum from North Carolina and thank you for being on. We're going to do a post show. Okay. Robbie and I after, so you can okay. just say peace and goodbye. Bye. Later. Come visit me down South. Yeah. We'll put all our social media in the, uh, in the show notes if you want to uh, connect and other than that, see you later. <laughs> Welcome to the post show, my my post show bros. <laughs> Welcome. Um, high energy, Rob. What would you say on a scale of one to ten? Energy. Energy. Uh, you know, I'd say uh seven seven five. Pff, fucking liar.
This is your seven five, dude. This is, this is my seven five. You want to hear ten? Yeah. Welcome to the post show. Oh, <laughs> you're just a low energy dude, man. Um, that's all good. It's late. Um, we just uh, finished up. Well, I just finished up my uh, content video. Got it in at the last, literally the last minute of uh, my two weeks of running the Instagram, or else I would have been disqualified. So if you're listening to this podcast, also check out the Frank Sinatra cover video old Travi Boy put out in the nick of fucking time. Um, but otherwise, I was late to the punch on my Instagram running, but I got my four posts in and I don't know, like five, six stories. So, you know, holla, holla at me. When we got more stuff going on, I think we can post more shit, but I'm pretty pumped. Um, but uh, yeah, that episode with Tatum, man, what'd you think? Tatum, she was great. Um, she she came down from she came down from uh, North Carolina, uh, spent the weekend and uh, did a did a little recap on Monday with her before she took off, and uh, obviously had to get her on the podcast. And um, super cool girl, super super fun, super chill. Does a whole bunch of rad things like yeah. Like uh, nothing but good things to say about her and uh, Tatum. Thanks so much for uh, for for doing that with us. So yeah, so shout out Tatum. We had an epic ski weekend up north. Um, had the right weather. Got a great day of skiing in. Lots of uh, boosting with the 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 crew. And there's just nothing like a good weekend to let loose. But you know, back to reality, hit pretty hard this week. I was behind, as I said, on my uh, Instagram duties. Uh, got it in the nick of time, but it was stressful today, and it really fucked with our music day because we were supposed to spend every Tuesday making music, but we spent the last Tuesday working on your content, this Tuesday working on mine. So going forward, I think we've both realized uh, the detrimental effects of leaving Yes. our content last minute. The The effects of... Not planning, being unprepared, and um, I, th- well, I think we were just both a little bit off. Like we started out the year strong. I was ge- I was just looking good, feeling good, crushing work. I was sticking to my resolutions hard, mm-hmm. and uh, that always works for me. A couple months into the new year, and then I always start going on autopilot. Always. Where mm-hmm. like I don't really know if I'm living intentionally anymore. Like I'm getting some stuff done, but I'm also like, it's true. And you know that that's a great way to put it, because it, it's not like you. It's not like you're fucking off. Like it, like it's it's not like one minute you're hot, and and then the next second you're completely fucking off. It's like, yeah, you, you get to a point where. It's it's it 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 is autopilot, and you're just you're kind of cruising and like. You're doing sort of all the same things, but with less motivation, less intent, yeah, less less sort of drive until you until kinda, things start slipping. Until things start slipping, yeah, and it's and it's kind of those defining moments that you that you realize how far you've dropped, yeah, s- from where you were. Because it's like a, it's a gradual drop, and I, I, you know what? We had a pretty funny morning. Like I I wanted to just reset. I wanted to find a way to get my head back to where it was at the start of the new year with all this intention and 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 purpose behind everything I was doing. Um, so Robbie and I actually drove down to like the the lake. <laughs> we went out like uh, west where you can actually like drive up to the water and park. And we stood there like a couple idiots for a little while, and we just talked it all through. And we I think we realized one basic principle is that again like we've said in previous episodes and like we realized at the turn of this new decade is we think too fucking much and we have no trouble sitting and chatting about what we should do and oh we're fucking experts yeah we could sit here and i can drum up ideas all day And, and and why and philosophize about why we do this or why we do that but at the end of the day when uh unless we are in like a doing state where we're just like like when the new year started i just was a doer you know any yeah. anything that popped up any problem i would i would hit it right away yeah and 
in that state, I am intentional because I'm everything's happening when it should happen. I'm not pushing off anything to t- tomorrow and <clears throat> things just get done and, and, and it naturally lends itself to everything. The music work gets done first. You plan because you're a doer. You don't let anything slide. And it, when you start to become on autopilot, you become less of a doer. You know, some, some things are like, oh, you know what? I'll clean that. I'll clean those dishes tomorrow. But you don't realize how that like ripples through your entire life. Mm-hmm. Because then tomorrow it builds up, and now you're taking time out of maybe time you didn't have. Oh, totally. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's it's hard to explain in such a short Plus, segment at the end of the show. Like, but I I find I find so much too. Like like personally disciplining yourself. If you if you give yourself an inch, you're gonna take the fucking mile. A hundred percent. All the time, and it just it's it, well put. It, it's complete ripple effect through everything you do. So yeah, I, I really does the smallest little things. Um, and it's actually, it's hilarious. We watched the Shia LaBeouf motivational do it video. <laughs> and I want to put it at the end of this episode. I've never seen that before. That was pretty joke. Yeah, I'm going to put it at the end of this episode. Um, if you're watching the video and it's black right now, it's because we have no, we don't film this post podcast section, but we'll put the Shia LaBeouf video at the very end. And for the people listening, uh, you can either listen or go on the YouTube to watch it. But it, it actually makes so much sense with what we're talking about. Uh, it's just like something I, my, uh, my grandfather always used to say. It was like, just why put off to tomorrow what can be done today? And it, sound, it sounds kind of silly, but it, it is exactly right. If you can do something right now, mm-hmm. do it. And if you're a doer, it, everything just seems to line up. And by doing you also learn, you know, yeah. and you don't need to do so much thinking. The doing is like the experimenting phase. And we, we talked about that with Tatum on our episode. So I thought it was fitting to bring it in here. We talked about like f- thinking about all this stuff and gaining perspective versus actually experimenting on yourself and trying to change. And that comes with doing and doers just have do everything better. They chill better. Yeah. They party better. They, they go vacation better because they do the work to like set everything up better. You know what I mean? They just live a better fucking life. Doing's the way. I don't think you even have to give up on all the shit you like to do. I think you just, if you're a doer first, then you'll know like definitively when you have some time to be like, yo, I've done it all. So I'm just going to turn around and watch YouTube. That doesn't matter because I'm done everything. I think, uh, anyway. So all Robbie and I are doing now is we're not going to like check in on how much work we are doing and like babysit each other. We're just going to make sure we're in that state of mind. Like um, Robbie's not letting little things slip around the house. I'm not like sleeping in. Like as you can really see the switch to autopilot gradually build up in like the little things you do every day. Yeah, for sure. And we're just going to find a way to keep each other on that. But other than that, Rob, you're taking over the Instagram the next couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you bring a little doer mentality to it? Spend a little time early on. Look at how many posts and how many stories I put up. To fuck you up. Right. And make a plan to beat me um, because you owe me dinner. Mm. And uh, maybe I can get you dinner next time. Yeah, or maybe it'll it'll just be a wash. No. (laughs) (laughs) No. No. (laughs) I want fucking Sugo. (laughs) All right. All right. Uh, but uh, exciting news, <clears throat> we're in the studio tomorrow night to finish our song, so pray for us, pray to the music gods that this producer can finish the song as good as he recorded it, mix as well as he he recorded it, because he did a great job recording, um, and then fuck it, if it's, if it's as good mix as it is recorded, like if he can like bring that same professionalism to it, we're going to get fucking famous, my man. Thing's a banger. It's going to slap. It's going to get on the radio, indie stations, alternative stations, but still. Manifest. You heard it Man- here first. Yeah, you heard it here first. And uh, we're trying to put on the show to f- to launch this song, but we're having a real hard time getting venues to respond to us. Kind of fucking pisses me off a little bit, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey, do this your, is- Do your job. <laughs> do your job. This is the email. Hi, we're a band. Um, we're putting on an event. We're willing to give you a large sum of money to just host the event, uh, provide the staff that you already have, you know, do this thing that you do all the fucking time. 
We'll bring two or three hundred people. We'll bring a camera crew. We'll bring the entertainment. We'll promote your venue. We'll include it in this video and promote the fuck out of it. And you'll get all this fun exposure and all these people seeing it. And you don't have to do a fucking thing for us. But take our money and respond mm-hmm. to our email. Mm-hmm. And it's like, they see that and they're like, Ugh. oh my God. I'm not answering. We're going to put this in the respond in two week pile. Yeah, which uh, kind of makes me want to knock out... <laughs> I don't even know who I want to knock out. Something. Mm. Someone hopefully weaker than me. Easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe a small child. Mm. Someone you can throw in a locker. Mm -hmm. Easy. You know what I mean? I don't want, I don't actually want to risk anything, but I do want to get the aggression out. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But anyway, that's where we're at music wise. It's not all fun and daisies. I had to stay up super late tonight and, waste a good portion of my day putting my content video out because I let that slip um, and we're having trouble booking our venue but it's all going to be worth it if the song comes out banging and other than that thanks for listening thanks Tatum again for coming on Tatum you rock and we'll see you all next Tuesday do it just do it Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it. Make your dreams come true. Just do it. Some people dream of success while you're going to wake up and work hard at it. Nothing is impossible. You should get to the point where anyone else would quit. And you're not going to stop there. No, what are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can! Just do it! If you're tired of starting over, stop giving up.